نحن بدنا سلسلة نمشي بالشارع والناس ما تطلع فينا وتسب علينا Good afternoon on this Saturday, June 21st. I'm Nina Naufal. These are today's headlines. Hariri and Jamblat discussed the presidential vacuum in a meeting in Paris. Lebanese authorities released 13 people detained in a police raid Friday for lack of evidence. And Sunni rebels say they have captured Iraq's biggest oil refinery after overnight clashes with security forces. A long-awaited meeting between former Prime Minister Saad Hariri and Progressive Socialist Party leader MP Wadi Jamlat was finally held in the French capital of Paris. The talks are the first between the two leaders in over a year and focused on the country's presidential deadlock. Jamblad had delegated Health Minister Wael Abu Faoud to the Moroccan city of Casablanca earlier this month to prepare for the talks with the former PM. PSP leader has repeatedly stressed that he will not endorse Free Patriotic Movement leader MP Michel Aoun or Lebanese Forces Chief Samir Jaja for office. He also rejected withdrawing the nomination of Democratic Gathering MP Henri Hello in favor of the Central Bank Chief Riyad Salemi or the Army Commander General Jean Ahouaje. La fête de la musique is set to take place this evening despite the security lockdown that took over the country yesterday after a car bombing hit the eastern part of the country. The 2014 edition of the music festival will begin at 6 p.m. this evening with acts scheduled until 2 a.m. in the morning around Beirut's central district. Local and regional bands will play at six stages set up around Zaytuna Bay, Uruguay Street, Martyr Square, Beirut Sioux and the Roman Ruins. The performances will feature well-known local acts such as electro indie pop band Loop Stash, post-jazz rock group Pindal and indie blues act The Wanton Bishops. Lebanese authorities released 13 people detained in a police raid on Friday for lack of evidence, leaving four others suspected of having links to terrorist groups in detention. Police are interrogating the four remaining suspects and the judiciary will make a decision later in the day. Hours later, a suicide car bombing targeted a police checkpoint in eastern Lebanon, killing a 49-year-old officer and wounding 32 other people. The shadowy group Free Sunnis of Baalbek Brigade claimed responsibility for the bombing, saying they could not reach their target but they will do so later. Speaker Nabih Bidi broke his silence after being the alleged target of an assassination plot, saying Lebanese politicians must quickly elect a new president and revitalize the work of the government along with heightened security measures to face the threat of terrorism. The security solution is not enough, Bidi told Estafid in remarks published this morning. Just as the government was formed with a political will to ease tensions, the only solution now is to unite in politics and reactivate institutions, particularly by electing a new president and resuming work in parliament and the cabinet. The speaker's remarks come a day after Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnu said Bidi was likely the target of the assassination plot, which would have taken place at UNESCO conference for Muhtaz in Beirut. And joining us today here in our studios is Middle East Affairs political analyst Karol Malouf. She's here to discuss this further. Karol, thank you for being with us. On this first day of summer, Speaker Nabih Bide said Lebanon cannot bear such catastrophes because the tourism season is the first victim of terrorism, which returned to surface and infiltrated Lebanon after the recent developments in Iraq. These are his words. Do you agree? Um, I think we have to be clear that Lebanon is not uh, on an island. Lebanon is part of its immediate surroundings. So definitely what is happening in Syria and Iraq and in the neighboring countries will uh, affect Lebanese uh, politics and the security in Lebanon. Uh, we have seen uh, since, the, um, uh, since the problem started in Syria uh, a rise in uh, extremist fundamentalist groups such as ISIS or Daesh as we call it and uh, this as a franchise has been growing in the region. We have seen uh, since the invasion of Iraq in two th 2003 some groups, Sunni groups in Iraq fighting the occupation, but ISIS, as we have 
uh, come to uh, understand its meaning as the Islamic State for Iraq and the Levant has been growing uh, in influence. They currently control northern Syria and uh, uh, recently over the last two weeks they have taken control over most of the Sunni uh, provinces uh, in Iraq, uh, be it Nineveh, uh, where, uh, I mean, or Mosul as it's uh, commonly known, or uh, uh, parts of uh, Kirkuk and, uh, and Salah al and other uh, uh, predominantly Sunni areas. I, so, I, of I, course, this is affecting us uh, here in Lebanon as well. I want to get to Iraq and talk about it a little bit later, but hardline Sunni groups have claimed responsibility for the attacks uh, yesterday, and they're they're claiming responsibility for the attacks against Shias in the country, saying they are meant to punish Hezbollah for fighting along Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's troops. However, Hezbollah's chief, Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah, said that had it not been for their involvement in Syria, ISIS would have come and taken over Lebanon in a more dramatic way. Do you agree with that stance? This is like uh, asking uh, whether the ch chicken or the uh, I mean the chicken or the egg or the egg or the chicken who who started this and who was who started first is not the issue the issue is that uh, the Hezbollah have been explicitly involved in fighting ISIS in Syria uh, this has come back to uh, haunt us in Lebanon. We, w I think it was, it is a bit naive to think that it is possible to find, to fight uh, such an international jihadist extremist organization in a limited geographical area in Syria and not expect it to be, uh, you know, transmitted to the local um, atmosphere of tension or sectarian tension between the Sunnis and the Shia in Lebanon, which is Hezbollah and the, and the Sunni uh, extremists on the other hand. So um, Lebanon uh, is easily targeted uh, by these organizations, extremist organizations, because of uh, the element of involvement by Hezbollah in the regional crisis uh, related to ISIS. All right, so Hezbollah, you're saying, is, uh, is involvement in Syria is partly to blame for this. However, in Tripoli, for the last two, three years, there have been clashes between Sunni and Shias, and we've seen a lack of involvement from the government and the army increasingly they've they've increasingly taken care of it but not enough could this be also one of the reasons why now it's spreading to beirut we have to be careful Yumna, in how we look uh, at the different sunni denominations there are different factions or different groups that range from extreme jihadist uh, organizations such as al-qaeda such as the al-qaeda or isis and then to the more uh, center uh, groups such as uh, the different factions who were fighting uh, in tripoli the, the factions who were fighting in tripoli against uh, jabal mahsin was a local long-term uh, historical problem between uh, Bebe Tabene and Jabal, and Jabal Mohsen that has, that has been taking place for a long time. Uh, definitely it was related to the regime in Syria and the problems that were taking place in Syria. However, that this doesn't mean that the, that the Sunni elements of Tripoli are related to ISIS or to Al-Qaeda. Uh, this is a very long spectrum of groups that fight along different lines and uh, I don't believe that Tripoli has anything to do with, with, with ISIS. I think uh, ISIS is, uh, come, uh, as we've seen, the responsibility has come from people, uh, from a group in the Beka, which is in a proximity with Syria. Uh, oh. If you look at what happened in Al Qalamun, for right. example, all the fighters, but let me just, just, just finish Sorry, this Carol, idea. We have to take, we have to take a quick break, but okay. right next step, we will be talking about Ida with Carol Malouf. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Sunni rebels have captured Iraq's biggest oil refinery after overnight clashes with Iraqi security forces, according to local sources. But a military spokesman is denying this. State TV reports that Iraqi forces backed by combat aircraft had repelled four attacks on the refinery by ISIL fighters. Iraqi security forces have largely halted the initial rapid advance by ISIL-led fighters, but the rebels continue to make gains. On Friday, Sunni fighters captures the Qaim border crossing with Syria, about 320 kilometers west of Baghdad, after a day of clashes that killed about 30 Iraqi soldiers. 
The most recent gains by the Sunni rebels come as Shia fighters loyal to the powerful and religious leader Muqtada Sadr rallied across Ida, vowing to protect the capital Baghdad and other religious sites. We're back with you, Karad. I know you were, you were going to finish a sentence about what more do we have to expect from similar attacks like the ones of yesterday. So I'm going to let you do that and then we'll go straight to Iraq. Uh, thanks, Yumna. I just wanted to say that the fighters who were in Qalamun area, which is the board with the Lebanese border, have been uh, defeated by the Syrian army and their allies, Hezbollah. These fighters have fled to the border mountains uh, between the no man's land between Lebanon and Syria. And I think uh, if we read well the signs, there's going to be some more retaliation against. Uh, Hezbollah and their allies in Lebanon as a retaliation for what happened in Qalamun as they are on our border uh, now. That's, that's, that was the point I wanted to make. All right, well, let's bring this back to Iraq, which has in the last 10 days faced a wave of tension and crises. Prime Minister Nouri Maliki has been accused of pursuing anti-Sunni policies, pushing a lot of Sunni militants to join the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or the Levant as it's known, which has allowed them to make rapid advances in recent days. And I know you just returned from Iraq, so can you tell me about the situation there? Uh, that's true. I came back yesterday. We were there for 10 days uh, on the front lines in Kirkuk, in Mosul, and uh, in most of the Nineveh province. And we have uh, also experienced firsthand uh, embedded, we were embedded with the, the Peshmerga. I can tell you first that uh, the difference between what happened in Mosul and what was happening in Al Anbar province for the last year. Uh, Al-Anbar, uh, there was an uprising, uh, there was a, a very strong Sunni movement, uh, and it was sieged by the, what the Iraqi calls the Maliki army. Uh, the, in Mosul, on the other hand, uh, the difference was that the uh, Maliki army or the Iraqi army in 24 hours deserted all their military posts and, uh, and the army totally collapsed okay, so, but what in does that this area. Mean? What does this mean? So they're, they're basically, what can you expect in the next week or two weeks in Iraq? Uh, in the, sure, there, there was, uh, the, we should also bring in uh, the element of, and I have to mention this, the element of propaganda, because having spoken to some Iraqi army deserters, they were clear that they were hearing that the Islamic State uh, in uh, Iraq and Levant are coming, or Daesh are coming, to slaughter them. So there was a lot, uh, there was a, a, a parallel media war or social media war that was taking place as the war was, take, was happening on the ground. Now, in the next two weeks, uh, we will see uh, uh, two things mainly. Uh, to now, uh, there is a historical moment uh, for the Americans and the international community to understand the demands of the Iraqi Sunnis. Right, but the Americans don't want to take part of it. There's, there's a lot of, Obama just said that he wanted to make sure that he lets the Iraqi government take care of ISIS and he didn't want to really interfere in that sort. Although he did send a, a ship to the uh, to, to be there to prep in case of that he wanted to go for airstrikes, but this is still being debated. Am I correct? Uh, while that is public, publicly true, I can tell you from um, um, sources that there are talks taking place now between the Sunni leaders and not Daesh. Sunni leaders are the Naqshbandis who follow Azat al duri the former Ba'athist uh, leader. There are Ba'athists, there are uh, the Islamic army of Iraq and, uh, and former generals getting together in a coalition uh, with the Kurds. And uh, yesterday there were high level meetings in uh, Kurdistan uh, and there are secret talks with them, between them and the Americans on how to push this forward. And what the Sunnis in Iraq are asking for is a federal system, a state divided in to a Kurdish area, a Sunni area, and a Shia area. All right. I can, yeah, Karar, I can tell We still you. have one minute. I just wanna, I want you to wrap it up quickly and tell me, do you think it's going to get worse in Iraq? Is this the kind of analysis that you've come through having been there? Uh, as I was saying earlier, the Americans have to play a very decisive role here. Either push the, with, uh, uh, with the Sunnis, the moderate Sunnis and the Kurds for a federal state in Iraq because it's virtually impossible today for the, for the Iraqi army to go back to the Sunni areas or there's going to be an all-out sectarian war as has been called by uh, al-Sistani for uh, jihad, uh, Sunni, uh, uh, Shia jihad against the Sunnis. So we are definitely okay. at, a, at a turning point right. at this moment. Thank you so much for being with us.
with us, that was a political analyst Karol Manouf, who has just returned from Iraq, commenting on the situation in Iraq and Lebanon. And on that note, here are our headlines. Hadidi and Jamblad discuss the presidential vacuum in Paris. Lebanese authorities released 13 people detained in a police raid on Friday for lack of evidence. And Sunni rebels say they have captured Iraq's biggest oil refinery after overnight clashes with security forces. This wraps up your Saturday headlines here on Future Television. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow. نحن بدنا سلسلة يمشي بالشارع والناس ما تطلع فينا وتسبر علينا